Hello and good afternoon. My name is Megan Lawrence. I'm a clinical educator for a private dialysis corporation. So one topic I'm very familiar with is calculating ultrafiltration goals for dialysis patients. So that's what we're going to discuss this afternoon is understanding and calculating ultrafiltration goals. So first, let's get into our objectives. At the completion of this presentation, you'll be able to recognize the importance of healthy kidneys by least listing at least five uh, primary kidney functions. You'll be able to explain ultrafiltration by identifying its role in dialysis, demonstrate competency in transitioning between units of measurement by calculating goals in both milliliters and kilograms, understand terms used when calculating ultrafiltration goals by defining four key terms, demonstrate competency in calculating ultrafiltration goals by successfully completing two practice problems, and we're going to do those together. So goals at the conclusion of this presentation is going to be to list kidney functions, identify ultrafiltration, define the terms that we use when we're calculating ultrafiltration goals, uh, use different units of measurement, and complete practice ultrafiltration problems. So we're going to do all of that today. The kidney functions. So the kidneys are very important. Uh, they serve several main functions. Of course, removing waste and toxins like urea maintaining fluid balance through the secretion of renin. This has a big impact on the patient's blood pressure and fluid volume. Maintaining acid-base balance, balancing electrolytes like potassium, calcium, sodium, uh, and producing erythropoietin, which helps produce red blood cells and improves the patient's hemoglobin, and then also metabolizing vitamin D. Uh, so these are very important kidney functions. The one that we're going to talk about the most today is that of fluid removal or maintaining fluid balance. So healthy kidneys help excrete any excess fluid that we take in in our diet. But for dialysis patients, this functioning, um, this factor is no longer there. So they tend to be very fluid overloaded. So your typical dialysis patient, end-stage renal disease patient, they're going to be uh, very fluid overloaded, fluid in their lungs, you may see it in their interstitial spaces, lots of edema, and that is because their kidneys are no longer removing that excess fluid. So our job as dialysis personnel is to make sure we remove the appropriate amount of fluid in dialysis. How does the machine do that? Well, just to a high level overview, uh, basically the dialyzer serves as a membrane, a semi-permeable membrane, and it allows blood and dialysate to run side by side. Uh, and what we do is we actually use force or pressure to push fluid from that patient's vascular space or the vessels um, from their plasma into the dialysate compartment so that it can then go down the drain. Uh, so we're able to force the, through pressure, force that excess fluid out of the patient's vascular space. Uh, it's very important though that we remove the right amount. Uh, and so that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, there are several key terms that you're going to hear. One is the ultrafiltration goal. So if ultrafiltration is how we remove fluid, you can imagine the ultrafiltration or UF goal is how much fluid we're going to remove from the patient. The estimated dry weight is simply what this patient should weigh if they were dry or had no extra fluid. This is determined by the doctor. Available weight is how much we have available to remove. A great example is if you have a patient that weighs approximately 70 kilos, the doctor says they should weigh 68 kilos, uh, then this patient's got approximately two kilos on them. Uh, next, we'll talk about target weight, and that is how much fluid we actually intend or how much weight we intend to remove from that patient uh, while they're on the dialysis machine. So how do we do this? Uh, one is we're going to notice we transition a lot between units. Uh, 1,000 milliliters, you know, is the same thing as one liter. Uh, but the reason we weigh our patients in kilograms is because one kilogram is equal to one liter. So if you took a bag of normal saline, you set it on a scale, and you weighed it, that one bag of saline would weigh approximately one kilogram. So this is why we weigh our patients in kilos. It makes it much more convenient for us to transition between units. Um, so this unit of measurement uh, is used to help us estimate how much fluid to remove. So a great example is if you have a patient that should weigh 70 kilograms, they drink three liters of fluid over the weekend, 
Uh, you can expect when they come back to you on Monday that they're going to weigh 73 kilograms. Uh, so it makes it very easy for us to transition. So how do we calculate ultrafiltration goals? First thing you have to do is weigh the patient. You have to find out how much the doctor says they should weigh. So you've got to have their dry weight. You're going to subtract the difference. So uh, that is called your available weight. That's how much we have available to remove. You can't just set the patient for that. And the reason is because we give them a lot of fluid uh, through the, the lines. If you imagine like you prime an IV pump, uh, well, in our case, our lines are very big, lots of fluid. So we are actually giving them additional saline. So that has to be accounted for as well. So you add that in, then you get what your true target is to remove during the hemodialysis treatment and you'll convert it to milliliters so that you can tell the machine in milliliters how much fluid you intend to remove. So it sounds like a lot of steps, but we're gonna actually practice this together and it'll make it a little bit easier to understand. So this example here, uh, first you wanna weigh the patient. So let's say our patient weighs 70 kilograms. And next, you've got to know how much the doctor says they should weigh. So let's say the doctor says they should weigh 68 kilograms. So the difference here, is two kilograms. That is how much we have available to remove. Uh, next, you have got to account for any prime or fluid that's given during the treatment. Most often, this is 500 milliliters. So if you take your two kilos that we determined we had available, you add in 500 milliliters, which would weigh 0.5 kilograms. That gives you a total of 2.5. That's how much weight we need to take off. And it, we set our machine in fluid, so we've got to transition again from kilograms, which is a unit of weight, uh, to milliliters, which is a unit of fluid volume. So we would want to uh, convert that to 2,500 milliliters. That is how much you would set your patient for. Uh, next, calculating uh, your goal, example B, uh, you have a patient's weight, let's say he's 53 kilograms. Estimated dry weight, according to the doctor, is 50. So our difference here in this case is going to be three kilograms that is your available weight you have to add in or account for any additional fluid we give which is usually 500 milliliters so 0.5 so that gives us a target of 3.5 you convert it into milliliters so add your two zeros you've got 3500 milliliters so not too terrible i would say if you uh if you want to get better you want to improve definitely practice, make up practice problems for you to do. And once you go through those steps several times, it becomes second nature and it gets easier and easier to calculate ultrafiltration goals. Uh, so just to conclude, you know, one of the primary functions of the kidneys is fluid removal. And dialysis patients, they rely on ultrafiltration through the dialysis machine, that filtering under pressure to remove excess fluid. And that goal is determined by dialysis personnel. We have to look at the patient's weight, we have to look at how much the doctor says they should weigh. We establish the difference. And of course, there are higher level things we look at, you know, assessing the dry weight. Is it really accurate and things like that? But as far as a basic overview, this is how we look at uh, ultrafiltration goals for dialysis patients. So I appreciate you taking the time to look at this presentation and hopefully you learned a little bit of something about uh, dialysis patients and fluid volume status and ultrafiltration goals. So if you have any questions, please reach out to me. And these are my references.